day and welcome to Blame It on History. I'm Jonathan Preston. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel back in time and speak with a figure from the Old Testament? For me, that person would be Moses, the man who led millions to freedom, met with God, and brought down the Ten Commandments. In this interview, we'll imagine what Moses might have said based on the writings from the Bible. While this is for entertainment purposes only, it's a chance to dive deeper into the incredible story of Moses and explore the faith, leadership, and lessons that still resonate today. You won't want to miss it. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us, Moses. Hearing from someone with such a profound impact on history is a privilege. Let's begin by discussing your relationship with God. How has it shaped your life? It's certainly a pleasure to meet you, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. My relationship with God has been the cornerstone of my existence. My life was transformed from the moment He spoke to me through the burning bush. God's guidance has been both a blessing and a burden as He entrusted me with leading His people. Every step I took, every decision I made, was under His watchful eye. There were times of doubt and struggle, but my faith in Him never wavered. It was this relationship that gave me the strength to persevere, even when the path was difficult. Moses, when God first called you to lead the Israelites to freedom, how did you feel? And how did you deal with your stuttering, especially when speaking to Pharaoh and leading such a large group of people? When God called me at the burning bush, I was filled with doubt, fearing I wasn't eloquent enough to face Pharaoh. But God reminded me he made my mouth and would give me the words. He sent Aaron to support me, and as I accepted my calling, my confidence in God grew. My stuttering became proof of his power, showing that when God chooses you, he equips you, even if you feel unqualified. How has your relationship with your siblings, Aaron and Miriam, influenced your journey? Well, my relationship with Aaron and Miriam has brought both support and conflict. Aaron, my older brother, was my companion and advocate, especially in confronting Pharaoh. Miriam, my sister and a prophetess, was vital during our early days post-Egypt. However, conflicts arose, particularly when they challenged my authority. These painful moments highlighted the need for unity and forgiveness within a family on a significant mission. You've led the Israelites for many years now. What has been the most challenging aspect of leading them? Despite witnessing miracles like the Red Sea's parting and manna from heaven, the greatest challenge has been the people's lack of faith and persistent rebellion. Leading them demanded immense patience, as I had to remind them of our journey toward a greater promise, especially when they turned against me or lost focus on our goal. Speaking of Egypt, can you tell us more about your early life there and how it influenced you? I was raised in the palace of Pharaoh, surrounded by wealth and power. Yet I always knew I was different. I was a Hebrew, though I lived as an Egyptian prince. That duality shaped me profoundly. I saw the oppression of my people and felt a deep sense of injustice. It was this awareness that led me to act. Though my actions were impulsive at first, like when I killed the Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave. That event forced me to flee and ultimately led me to the desert, where God found me and called me to my true purpose. You mentioned your impulsive actions. How do you view your past mistakes now, looking back? My mistakes were numerous, but each one taught me something valuable. The death of the Egyptian, my hesitation at the burning bush, and even striking the rock twice instead of speaking to it as God commanded, all these moments of failure humbled me. They showed me that leadership is not about being flawless, but about being faithful. God used my weaknesses to teach me reliance on Him, and I believe that's a lesson applicable to anyone, regardless of their walk in life. What did you feel when you received the Ten Commandments? What was going through your mind? When I received the Ten Commandments, I was overwhelmed by the gravity of the moment. 
These were not just rules. They were the foundation of a covenant between God and His people. They represented God's will for how we should live in a relationship with Him and with one another. I felt a deep sense of responsibility to carry these tablets down the mountain. At the same time, I was aware of my unworthiness and the weight of leading a people who had so much to learn about faithfulness and obedience. After receiving the Ten Commandments, you descended from the mountain. What was it like when you saw the Israelites worshipping the golden calf? When descending the mountain with the tablets and witnessing the Israelites worshipping the golden calf, I felt a mix of anger and sorrow. Their betrayal of God shortly after being delivered from Egypt and experiencing His presence deeply affected me. In frustration, I shattered the tablets symbolizing the broken covenant with God due to their idolatry and forgetfulness. Moses, you were given the Ten Commandments directly from God, and they have shaped the moral framework of countless generations. Do you have a favorite commandment among them? And if so, why? That's an interesting question. If I had to choose, I would say the commandment to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath is not just about resting from labor. It's a reminder that our work and achievements do not define us. It's a day set apart to reflect on God's goodness, His creation, and His provision. In a world that often demands constant productivity, the Sabbath teaches us to trust in God's care and to find peace in Him, and that's something I find deeply meaningful. How do you feel about the future of the Israelites under Joshua's leadership? I have full confidence in Joshua. He has been my faithful assistant for many years and has proven himself to be a man of courage and faith. God has chosen him to lead the people into the promised land, and I believe he will do so with great success. My role was to guide the people through the wilderness. Joshua will establish them in the land God promised to our ancestors. It's a continuation of the mission, and I'm at peace knowing that he will carry it forward. As you reflect on everything, how do you see your life's purpose now? My life's mission has consistently been to act as an instrument of God, guiding His people and helping them comprehend His laws and love. Reflecting on my journey, it's had its ups and downs, yet no matter what, it has always brought me deep fulfillment because I have experienced God's presence in ways that few have. My purpose was not solely to lead a nation, but to contribute to its identity and help it to reconnect with God. Moses, your experiences and teachings have laid a foundation for the faith of many generations. Given all that you've seen and heard from God, do you have any insight into the coming of the Messiah? Yes, the Messiah is a promise God has woven throughout our history. On Mount Sinai, the Lord spoke to me of a prophet greater than I, who would speak his words directly to the people. This Messiah will bring ultimate deliverance, not just from physical oppression, but from the bondage of sin. He will embody the perfect relationship with God and establish a new covenant with His people. Though I don't know all the details, I trust God's plan will bring hope and redemption to all who seek Him. What has been your biggest regret? My greatest regret is that I will not enter the promised land myself. Because of my disobedience in striking the rock, God has decreed that I will only see it from afar. It's a harsh but just consequence. I've accepted it, though it pains me. But I trust in God's wisdom, and I know that the journey has always been about more than just me, and I am at peace with that. It's God's will, and I accept it because it's about the fulfillment of His covenant with His people. Finally, what message would you like to leave for future generations who may look to your life for guidance? My message is simple. Trust in God and lean not to your own understanding, even when the path is unclear. Obey His commands, even when they seem difficult. And remember that you are part of a story much bigger than yourself. Each person has a role to play in God's plan, 
And though you may face trials and challenges, stay faithful. God's promises are true, and His purposes will prevail. Live your life with humility, service, and devotion, and you will find your place in His eternal story. Thank you, Moses, for sharing your wisdom and experiences with us. It is my prayer that your words will undoubtedly continue to inspire many. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for this opportunity. It was a pleasure. May God's blessings be with you and all who seek to know him.